another beautiful day in Florida, we're gonna make a whole pack of brisket on the pit barrel cooker. And we're also gonna take the point of this brisket and take a stab at making some burnt ends. Now this is a 14 and a half pound pack of brisket. You can see there's uh, quite a bit of fat on this guy, right? Look, all of this fat here. So what I'm going to do is take some time and trim this guy up. I want to leave about a quarter inch of fat on it. Um, all of this thick, heavy fat, at least in my experience, does not render off. So um, we'll pick this back up when I get this guy cleaned up some. We've about got this guy trimmed up as much as I'm going to do. I did have to switch knives. That other knife sucked. There's still a little bit of fat on it. Um, but you can see I've got most of it off. Th this brisket had more fat on it than any brisket I've done in quite a long time. Now, I don't know how familiar you are with brisket, but this right here is what they call the flat. And then here, what you got is the, it's probably easier to see from the other side. This is the point, okay? Now, if you're not going to make burnt ends, uh, you don't really need, need to worry about it. Uh, but the only reason I'm showing you that is because I am going to make burnt ends today. And there's a couple different options you have. One, you can go ahead and separate this right now. You can come in through where this fat line is. It's just fat that connects the two. We could go in and cut it off. Or we can start to cook and cut it off after it's cooked. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm not suggesting which way is best. But for those of you that aren't even going to do the the... Uh, burnt ends, uh, you know, perhaps you'll appreciate that we're going to cook the whole brisket together uh, until it's time to actually, uh, you know, take the step to make the burnt ends. This step is optional, but I am going to inject this brisket with this holy cow brisket injection. It's a really, really fine powder. Uh, what I've got in here is one cup of beef broth, and this is two cups of injection. It's per the instructions on the, on the bag. You know, you don't have to have this. You don't inject it all. Now, you don't have to inject it all, but it's just a chance to add a little bit more flavor, and it's a chance um, to add a little bit more moisture to it. I'm just going to get this mixed up real well. By the way, if you don't want to get the injection, don't. You could just use beef broth or, you know, if you're not worried about it being too sweet, you might try some apple juice, It's, uh, you know, I guess, is an option as well. Or like I say, you can just skip this step. Now, I'm going to take about half of this and set it aside. I'll show you why later. We're not going to need it all. Looks like I need to keep mixing it up a little bit anyway. Okay. But I don't want to uh, contaminate this. But let me just set this one aside. All right. And then we're going to start with our injection. Now, if you don't inject and, and you're interested in doing it, um, this little plunger. I always put a little oil on, it just makes it slide easier in here. And by the way, if you're interested in more details on the Holy Cow brisket injection, I'll put a link in the description as well here as in the iCard. Okay, so I'm just gonna get some of that injection in here. And we're gonna go in at a, you know, at an angle and inject up and work slowly working the needle back as we inject, you know, about every inch. There's no science in this, right? Just having a little bit of fun in your backyard. We're not competing with anybody. But I'm just gonna continue injecting this guy up, like I say, about every inch. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but you actually see the meat, it'll kind of puff up where the injection's going in. And if it starts coming out another hole, you've got enough in that particular area. So we'll be right back as soon as I get this guy all injected up. Now for my seasoning today, I'm going to use this Heaven Made Products Texas Best Brisket Rub. Okay, if you're interested in this rub, it's got uh, freeze-dried garlic, raw sugar, brown sugar, onion, smoked paprika, parsley, paprika, chili powder, black pepper, cayenne pepper, thyme, cumin, nutmeg, and then it goes on and on. Again, I'll put a link if you want to know more about this. 
Now you see I've got some of this leftover injection. I'm just going to use it as a binder, okay? No reason to waste it. It's flavor. I mean, if I were, you know, if I didn't have any extra here, I, I certainly wouldn't go make up more just to use it for this. But you can see we've got plenty uh, of, of injection where it's come out of the brisket as we were uh, injecting it up. All right. Now let me get my hands uh, wiped off with the paper towel here. And now I'm just going to come back in with that Heaven Made Products brisket seasoning. And, um, you know, if you make brisket all the time, you already know about what, what I'm getting ready to tell you. But brisket's pretty thick, right? Uh, and it's a beefy, you know, piece of meat. So you can go pretty heavy on the seasoning. You don't have to worry about it getting too salty or, you know, anything like that if that's a concern of yours. So all we're going to do is get this brisket all seasoned up on both sides. And then, as usual we'll get over to this pit barrel cooker and talk about how we're going to do this cook. So I am going to hang this guy. This is pretty thick down here uh, where the point is. So what I'm going to do is just put the one hook in. All right. And I think it'll hold it very sufficiently. Uh, at least I sure hope it does. And let's get over to the pit barrel. This pit barrel is running around 220 right now. I need to get this grill grate out of here. I'm not certain why I put it in here. I guess I just wasn't thinking. Okay, let's get this guy back in here like so. That's my probe. Now let's get this brisket hanging here. Okay, now I was afraid of that. It's actually touching the charcoal. So we're going to revise our technique here a little bit. What I'm going to do is come in here with two hooks, okay? I had to do this once before when I made a brisket in here. It touches the charcoals in the bottom. Okay. So we'll get it hung like so. Just want to make sure you can see that. I've actually got a hook on each side and I want to get this lid on it real quick so the temperature doesn't get too high. Now while this brisket is cooking in the pit barrel, let me tell you how you can possibly win one of these heaven made products brisket rub. All you have to do is leave a comment down below and we'll pull a random comment and ship you out one of these. Brisket's been three and a half hours. I put a probe in it after two hours just to kind of keep an eye on it. You can see it's starting to get that dark bark. Just going to check again. I don't know if you can see that. 168, 175. Okay. So now I'm going to take it out and we're going to wrap it. And actually, I'm going to separate this point from the flat so that we can make the burnt ends. Let me get this probe out. Now you can see it's got this nice bark on the outside. It's got a little bend because we bent it putting in this pit barrel, right? Let me get the lid back on this pit barrel so the temperature don't get too high. Now this brisket's hot, right? So you want to be careful, wear some gloves. But you can see, right, this is where that uh, point and flat meet. Okay. And um, just going to come down in here real easy with your knife. It'll, it'll pretty much come apart. It doesn't take much cutting here. Okay. And I mean it is hot. Hopefully you can see that, all that wonderful juice we got. And if I were smart, I would lift this end up so we don't lose all this juice. There we go. And let me see what we got here. Okay. Now, here's our point. That's what I'm just going to take off. You can see some of this fat. We don't need this for anything. 
Just going to take a little bit of it off. Okay, excellent. Okay, so there's our point with the big end. And then our flat, you know, it's bent instead of, you know, literally being flat because of having it curled up in that pit barrel cooker. Okay, and there's a little bit of that, you know, fat that was holding this, this to the point. I'm just going to get a little of that off. I mean, you don't have to, but I don't like biting into a piece of fat. All right, now let me get some foil and I'll show you what we're going to do here. So I got a foil pan here, and I got some foil. Looks like I'm not going to be able to save much of this juice. All right, so I'm going to take that point, all right? And we're just going to cut it up in about one inch, maybe an inch and a half slices here. Okay, it's already got real nice smoke ring on it. You can see, look how juicy it is already. I mean, it's not done yet. We got some more goodies, good stuff to do here. And now I'm just going to cut it again, about inch cuts this way. It's really hot. These aren't the insulated kind of gloves. Okay, let me just cut these guys up. Pretty thin down here. It is juicy. I'm looking forward to this when it's done. Okay, one more here. Hi. Now, if you remember, we had that uh, uh, injection, right? I got about uh, two-thirds of a cup. I ended up adding a little bit more beef broth back into it. Just going to put a little bit of this down in the bottom, all right? Now we're going to put this, um, these um, squares of brisket back in this pan. And I think I will add just a little bit more beef broth to this. Let me get these guys in here. I'm just going to put a little bit more in here. Okay. And this fat's going to keep rendering, so we're going to get some additional uh, juice and goodness from these uh, squares. Now I want to cover this up with a piece of foil. It's fairly tight, right? I don't want my juice getting out of there. Okay. And let me just set that aside a minute while we get this flat ready. And I'm not going to try to use this juice. It's run all over the place. But you can try to save this juice and use it for some of your moisture. It's just I ended up making a big mess and didn't get to it. Okay. We're going to get that flat in here. All right. And you want to double wrap this guy. That. Let's turn him over this way. Look at that collar, it's beautiful. And I'm just going to take that rest of that injection, get her in here. And this is going to continue to cook and render down as well. So I don't think we'll need any more juice for that. And again, you want it fairly tight, right? You don't want to, all your goodness evaporating out. 
And now let me get a second piece of foil. Now, we're going to get both of these back over to this pit barrel cooker. So, we got our flat here. Well, I'm going to have a heck of a time fitting that pan in here. All right. So we're going to make it work, right? That's all we can do. There we go. Now, I am going to get a probe back in the top of this flat just to help us. I'm more interested in how it's going to feel than the temp. But once it gets up to around 200, we'll start checking it. So we're going to get this lid on it. Let it keep going. Oh, and I forgot to put my other bar back in it. Let me get in in it. All right. Now let's just let it cook. It's been almost two more hours. This brisket, the, first of all, the pit barrel got up to about 310 degrees. And this brisket is temping at 209. So we're going to get it out. Have a look. Well, let's just get it out, probe it a little bit. If it's not ready, we'll wrap it back up in full, put it back on there. Okay. Don't want to lose all this juice goodness. I can help it. Look at the color of that. Almost looks like we put barbecue sauce on it, and we certainly have not done that. Okay. It just goes in. That's what you want. Hardly no resistance. It just goes in like butter. Okay? So we're going to set this aside. Now let's look at those burnt ends that we did. We'll set this aside for a minute. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Okay. Look at that. It just goes in like butter, okay? So, let's get these burnt ends ready. And I don't know if you guys can see that. We got that nice smoke ring right there. Now the barbecue sauce I'm going to use today is this Virginia Gentleman. It's got the 80 proof bourbon in it, okay? Now you don't want to like sauce these like you do ribs or anything, right? You're just going to go in with a light drizzle. Just like so. All right? Now I've seen some people will add a little uh, brown sugar to this. But what I'm going to do is come back in here with a little um, jalapeno honey. It's local, well, fairly local. I mean, two hours from here from Savannah, Georgia. But just a little drizzle of that for some sweetness. Again, you don't need a lot. Now, all I'm gonna do is make sure each piece is good and soaked up with that goodness. All right. And um, I'm not gonna cover this back up. But I am going to sit it back in this pit barrel cooker for about 10, 15 minutes just so that sauce can set up. And this pan's still hot, so let me get some gloves on here so I don't burn myself like I usually do. Okay, we're just going to let these guys sit back in here. And like I said, 10, 15, 20 minutes tops. They're done. We just want that sauce to set. In 15 minutes, we're going to get this lid off here. Hey, before I do that, I want to thank the people at Pit Barrel. They sent me out these gloves. I don't burn my hands anymore. Just going to get these burnt ends out of here. We're going to plate them up, and we're going to give them a try. Let me just, I want to get some more of that juice that's laying in the bottom of this as we get them out. Man, look at that. Look at that. Look how soft they are. Oh, yeah. Okay. Get these burnt in bad boys out of here. Let's 
going to be like eating candy, you just know it. <laughs> Now the grain on this uh, flat is running this way, right? We want to cut against the grain. Now I'm going to cut right through the middle of this guy. Okay. Turning around so you can see it. Oh, look at the juice. Got that nice smoke ring. Let me cut up a couple of pieces here. It is still hot. Okay. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it's just full of moisture. Can you see the juice coming out? And I mean, it is still really hot. Woo! Just pulls apart with your hands. No trouble at all. And I mean, it is just full of moisture. I mean, that's, that's what you're looking for, right? You see that juice coming out of it? There is just juice wet over here. And, you know, a little fat on the bottom, but look at that beautiful smoke ring, all right? We're going to give this brisket a try. I mean, it just got that nice part, pulls right apart. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Mm. You know, we were trimming this thing up. I told you it had more fat on it than a brisket I had seen in a really long time, at least for the ones I cook. You know, I do one every two months, every two and a half months, three months, something like that. Mmm. But the flavor on it is absolutely incredible. Now, I really believe that that uh, injection uh, helped. It's just got this really beefy flavor. I mean, it's got the biscuit uh, biscuit. It's got the brisket flavor, but it's like I can almost taste that uh, beef broth in it. I don't know how to quite describe it. And juicy. So, so juicy. That's the way brisket's meant to be. Now let's get back to those burn ends and check those out. Okay, let's get one of these guys. Now, I don't know how well this is going to show up in the video. They just, look, just fall apart like candy. Full of moisture. Okay, let's give one of these guys a try. <laughs> mm. That's some sweet goodness right there. Oh my gosh. I don't think I can describe it yet. Give me uh, one second. Mm. I mean, so, so juicy. You know that, that point has all the extra marbled fat in it. Mm. You get that barbecue sauce and that honey it's like eating candy that's that's definitely how burn ends are supposed to be making it in your backyard you know i don't know that they'll win any competitions but trust me your buddies your neighbors that come over they're gonna love you for those burnt ends mm. i thank you so much for watching another one of our videos um, if you're not a subscriber already, I hope you hit that subscribe button. Hit that little bell. You'll be notified of all of our uh, new videos when they come out.